In this video, we're going to be walking you guys through how we diagnosed a Daikin centrifugal chiller that was surging after we got done rebuilding it. We're going to start off by showing you guys what chiller surge sounds like. Then we're going to get into what chiller surge is. And then we're going to run through the service call step by step with you guys. That way you can kind of see what we checked, how we came up with the solution, and what the process looks like for troubleshooting a machine that is surging. So you guys don't end up seizing a compressor and having to rebuild the machine. There are ultimately three different problems that led up to this machine seizing its compressor and having to be torn apart and rebuilt. And we're going to be walking through each of those problems step by step with you so you guys can look out for the same things when you're out on service calls. The final problem on this machine is kind of uncommon, but if you follow a consistent method of troubleshooting, you're going to find these problems easily every single time. And we're going to break that down as well in this video. So this is what chiller surge sounds like. It might be a little bit loud, so keep that in mind. But this is what it sounds like. All surge is is a fancy way of describing what's happening inside the centrifugal compressor on this machine. A centrifugal compressor is what's called a non-positive displacement pump. So essentially, all that means is that it has a design lift or compression ratio for each type of impeller, kind of like a centrifugal pump. A centrifugal pump has a flow curve for what it's designed for at different pressure differentials. You can restrict the flow on a centrifugal pump to control water circulating through your system. A centrifugal compressor kind of operates like that. You can restrict the flow, but you can only do it so far before you exceed the pumping capacity of the compressor. And like a water pump, there's no mechanical means of ensuring that all the gas that goes into the compressor will leave the compressor like you would have on a screw or you like you'd have on a reciprocating compressor with valves and a physical mechanical seal. When you exceed this pumping capacity, the compressor will stop pumping refrigerant momentarily, and then the gas will travel backwards through the impeller until the impeller is back in its pumping range, and then it will begin pumping gas rapidly. And that's the noise you hear. So essentially what happens is the lift is too high for the impeller, the load is too great. Once it exceeds that capacity, gas flows backwards, lowers the differential, and then starts pumping refrigerant again. But it's doing it extremely rapidly and fast. And that's that noise you hear when you hear a machine surging. If you ever walk up to a Daikin or McQuay machine that's surging, it's really important that you find and correct the underlying issue. These machines don't like to surge. They run at a fairly high RPM. And if you're going to be surging a machine for a long time, you're going to be pulling the thing apart and rebuilding it. So it needs to be corrected. If your machine's surging, you need to find the solution. You need to get it fixed. A little bit of a backstory on this chiller was the customer called us out at the end of the season. They said that the chiller wasn't working and we got to the job site and found that the compressor was seized. So we went ahead and got the machine opened up and everything inside was pretty much trash. The impeller had to be replaced, the wheel eye seal had to be replaced, all the bearings had to be replaced. Pretty much every single wear item in the machine was destroyed and had to be changed because there was some sort of an underlying problem. We talked with the customer and they said that they want us to come back in the spring and see if we can diagnose the issue for them. So we get out there in the spring and touch base with the customer to get a little bit more of a backstory on the unit and get a little bit more information. The customer said that they've been maintaining the machine for the last 10 years and about five years ago the machine started surging on really hot days and they said that it became more frequent until it finally stopped cooling altogether when we got called out for the service call. This bit of information tells us that hey we have some sort of an underlying problem that's not a sudden change that's not something that just happened out of the blue we have something that has been going on for a long period of time and it's got some sort of a root cause so the next thing that i would do if i were walking up brand new never seen this unit before i'd be checking the sensors and transducers just to make sure that everything is within range that nothing is way out of calibration like some of the other videos I talk about, I would take all the sensors out, dangle them in the air, and compare them to the room temperature just to verify that they're all at least close. This is something that you need to make sure of. You need to be 100% certain that you're getting accurate information when you are running through the machine. 
Otherwise, if you're getting bad information or the controller's getting bad information, it can be telling the chiller to do all sorts of different things. So if you start with this, make sure that you at least have accurate information feeding the controller and that you have accurate information when you're taking your diagnostic log, then you know that you have a strong foundation to start from when you're troubleshooting anything on any chiller. Next, I started the machine, started to get the thing loaded up and it started surging right away at like 30, 40%. So I put a load limit on the machine, dialed it down to, I don't know, 25, 30%, just low enough so that I could get stable conditions so I can get an accurate log and let it sit there until everything's stabilized and then go ahead and take a diagnostic log. This is gonna be really important if you're trying to come up with the root cause of any problem on any machine. Just wanna take a minute to discuss the central hub that we put together, the central community for the Chiller Guys group. We're gonna be slowly moving the Facebook group into this new community here over the next few weeks to come. It's more of a central place for us to keep everything, for guys to chat with each other, to diagnose problems, to work through issues, to teach each other in a better way for us to share knowledge and learn and grow as techs. I'm gonna be adding the diagnostic sheets as well as some other literature and information, educational stuff inside the group as well that you can access for free once you get signed up. So if you wanna check that out, the link will be in the description of this video. All right, let's get back into it. When you're looking at your diagnostic sheet that you filled out and you're trying to make a determination as to why the machine is acting up and the root cause of why it's surging, the most common problems you're going to see on centrifugals is more than likely going to be happening in the condenser. You do have some low end surges also, but the most common thing I would say that you'd run into is going to be some sort of a problem in your condenser. So that's typically where we're going to start. So we're going to be looking at two readings specifically when we're just glancing at the control screen or that or when we first start taking our readings. So the first reading we're going to look at is our condenser approach. This tells us how good the heat is transferring between the refrigerant and your condenser loop. So if you look here, the design approach is somewhere between one, 0 and 1 and we have an approach of 16. So that tells me that we have very poor heat transfer in the condenser. That can be from either a chiller that has fouled up condenser tubes because it is acting as an insulator and not transferring the heat or it can be a low refrigerant level because the liquid refrigerant is surrounding the tubes in the condenser. So the level in the condenser, if it's low, it will give you a high approach also because there's less liquid refrigerant coming into contact with the tubes and transferring heat to the water. Another reading we're gonna be looking at here is the difference between the entering and leaving condenser water temperatures or the delta T. So if you look at the design at 100%, this machine is supposed to be running a 10 degree delta. So 85 entering, 95 leaving condenser water, and that'll give you your 10 degree delta. And if you look at the readings that we took, it had a 26 degree delta. So that's telling me that at a very minimum, we have a severe water flow problem, and we also might have a heat transfer issue in the condenser. So first, I went out and checked the strainers. So pull all the strainers apart, and we found tons of rust chips and garbage and sediment and everything piled in the strainer. We cleaned all that out and since we had the machine off, went out to the cooling tower and that thing was completely packed full of mud and rust and all sorts of shit that had been stuck in there for the last 10 years because the customer didn't even know that they had nozzles in the cooling tower. So I spent like half a day getting that damn thing cleaned and all the stuff removed out of the headers, all the nozzles. I flushed everything out of the tower basin just because there's mud and stuff that came down. So I cleaned that out real good. And then I went ahead and fired the machine back up and took my readings again. And when I did that, the delta across the condenser came way down to like six degrees. But my approach was still up around 14 degrees after I did this. So that tells me that the tubes were also fouled. So we brought the tube machine out, punched all the tubes, got all the shit out of the tubes. And because it's been running so long and I'm a little bit paranoid, I went ahead and stuck a boroscope in there and the tubes were also full of scale. That happens because there's minerals dissolved in the water and because there's no water flow, the temperature is elevated in the condenser and it'll create scale. Scale will form inside the tubes. So if scale builds up, that's gonna prevent heat transfer also and give us that really high approach. All in all, we had to shut the system down many times to get all the rust chips out because there was pipe that was full of rust. We had to get their chemical system in line with the chemical company. We had to overhaul the entire machine. We had to replace the bad flow switch on the condenser, punch the tubes, and acid wash the tubes to get the scale out of them. 
and then do an eddy current test after that. If the customer just had a working flow switch and the machine actually tripped out when it should have tripped out because there's no flow, none of these problems would have occurred. They would have spent a little bit of extra money on a service call maybe on a Friday night, but they wouldn't be spending over $150,000 on maintenance repairs. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Check out our new Chiller Guys hub, and we'll see you next time.